Hi, everyone. Welcome back for a little TLC. For the month of February, we've been talking about family, love, relationships, and things of that nature. We've had some really awesome talks. We started off with the father-daughter talk. Then we had a mother-daughter talk. Last week, we shifted to talk to the men, starting off with a mother-son talk. And this week, I'm very excited to end the week or the month of February by having a father-son talk, which I think is so critical. And so I'm hoping that y'all will take a lot out of this conversation. I got together some of my favorite boy dads who I think are doing a wonderful job. And so we're going to just glean from them and get some wisdom from them this evening. So they're going to start off by introducing themselves and the ages and sexes of their children or their child, depending on how many they have. And so we'll start off with Matthew. Hi, uh, Matthew. I have one son. He is currently five right now. Uh, my name is Orlando. I have three boys, uh, a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. So it's Miles, Mason, and Maddox, respectively. Hi, my name is uh, Vernon Miles. I have uh, three kids. Um, my oldest being Brooke. Brooke is actually 32. Um, and Nick, my son, is the next. Nick is 29, and Haley is 27 my youngest daughter. Okay, awesome. So we're going to, we have some varieties of ages and experience. So I'm excited to see what this conversation will hold. So I'm going to start off with a softball question, maybe. I don't know if it's a softball one or not. Mm -hmm. But the first question is, why do you think a father-son relationship is important? And y'all can answer however you are led. Um, whoever wants to go first. Uh, it's important. Um, the reason why it's important is because I think it's, I think it's like a certain, there's certain lessons you can learn from your dad that you can't learn from a mom or a mother figure. So I think having that father figure in your life to teach you certain things, it, it's critical for your growth and for you going into the world on your own. Um, yeah, it's, I, I, yeah, I think it's very, I think it's very pivotal in a young, a young man's life. So I, I guess for me, I, I think it is um, just a foundation that is laid from being a father that I think that we all see or need to, I guess like for children, like there, there's a foundation of like protection or just understanding how the world operates that like having a father, you really get to see a perspective of how things, how, how certain lessons are learned and like just how you should operate or how you should watch how things are being brought to you in a certain type of manner. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, Oh, you done Matthew. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think you have to have that uh, or must need to have that father-son relationship. I agree with Orlando. It's certain things that they can only learn uh, from a uh, dad or, you know, it, it's easier to learn from a dad. Um, but also, it, I take responsibility for my, my all my children, but especially my son, uh, as far as how he... Um, what kind of person he's going to be or what kind of person I want him to be. Um, therefore, I have to, you know, I started pouring into him uh, at a young age. Uh, and just like Matthew was saying, you, you got you to gotta teach him those lessons and different things as you go along. And, and really, you need that relationship because, you know, as you go along, you're going to need them to um, kind of listen to you more so or, or kind of imitate you more so than, than anyone else. It, you know, I know they're going to have their friends and their different things that go on there, but I really need them to, uh, to learn the values and the different things, how to treat people uh, or the work ethic and the different things uh, uh, from me, because I, I feel like that I, I'm looking at them and, and have their best interests or, and want them to do the best, to have the best life. 
So, um, so, but that relationship must, you know, start from me with when they were actually as a toddler, as a, as a, you know, from the beginning and, um, and then hopefully you can carry that on, um, you know, until, you know, they have kids like Nick does now. And then he, you know, hopefully he'll speak favorable and different things about, um, how I raise him and kind of want to mimic that if it's good. If it's not good, I don't mind him leaving it there. Don't don't mimic something that's not good because I don't want you doing that. But I, I do want you to learn the good things. But some of those things that I didn't do well in, I'm I'm totally okay with you abandoning that and, and doing it the way that the Lord leads you to do it. I think I think that's very good. You all mentioned um, some things about like there are some certain lessons that only a father can teach. Um, and I heard a quote the other day that said something like, uh, like a mom protects their children from the world, but a dad prepares their child to go into the world. And I think all of y'all um, talked about that in each of your answers. Mr. Vernon, you did say something about how you want your son to imitate you more so than anyone else and to have certain values. So I guess my first question for you all from that will be like, where did you all learn what it meant to be a good man? Like, how did you know what you wanted your sons to imitate? Cause I think you all are good men. And so that's why I feel mm -hmm. safe asking, <laughs> asking all those questions, this question, like where yeah. did you learn what it meant to be a good man? So uh, what I learned from uh, or how I learned about being a good man is uh, actually it came from my father, um, you know, and, and my father was well spoke of about, you know, uh, by the family. He's well spoke of about by his parents and, you know, his siblings and so on. So I, I would say my father, but I also had the opportunity to know my grandfather, which is my dad's dad, Frank Miles, which is uh, my dad's dad. So I was able to see, you know, my granddad, my dad, and I had some different uncles as well uh, that were, were looked at as, as, as good men. But also um, one thing that came um, that I remember too is my, my mother, mother's father, Gilda Lee, he died when I, he died before I was born. He died in 1965. But my dad had given me stories about what he had taught him. And he was, you know, he was considered a good man. So he actually poured into my dad, which was his son-in-law. And uh, so, you know, um, a lot of that and a lot of who, who I am, it kind of came from them. And I try to do the same with Orlando. I try to pour into Orlando, uh, you know, and, and like, like I said about Nick Orlando, those things that are good, you take those things that aren't good, just don't, I'm not worried. I, I don't care if you push it to the side, but hopefully I'll be example. And that's what I learned from, you know, my, my dad, my granddad, my dad talking about my other granddad and, and my different men in my life, as well as my uncles. Yeah, that's, that's funny. You mentioned that, like, of course, like growing up, I got my foundation from my dad, like watching him, how he treated my mother, how he treated my sister. and um. You know, even my, you know, my uncles, like they were, they were good role models. But, you know, as I'm growing and getting older, like I, I'm still learning, like I'm still trying to be a better father and husband. And I have Mr. Vernon to look up to. I have uh, even my friends, uh, the men of the church, uh, Mr. Eric is somebody I look, I look up to. Like I'm, I'm still learning today and I have great role models. Like any situation that comes, like I'm not really, I'm not really worried about it. I'm not really stressed when that time comes because I have sources that I can, I can reach out to and ask questions. So yeah, that's, that's, that's where a lot of my uh, motivation and, and uh, confidence comes from is from the men in my life, starting with my dad and also today, my father-in-law and men of the church. So So I, I would say for me, it was more so my stepfather, like coming into the picture, my mom already having children and like, he never dropped, missed a step. Like from day one, it was always, uh, these are my sons. Like he never once referred to us as stepchildren. 
and he showed us like he was like the first guy like I like really knew who like would just tell you they love you just cause like it's random. It's not like not like at a funeral or somebody's birthday. It's just like a random Tuesday and he'll just walk in like just want you to know I love you. And it's like just randomly like so for me it was like seeing somebody who was not my biological father pour into me and my siblings really like left an impact on me like as a dad to really show like how you how you can love someone like especially like when it comes to a son like to, to be a man to like teach them to show them things like maybe they didn't have that experience in life and it's like to give them the option to like this is what we can do and also i would just say you know just growing up growing up around my mom like just seeing like how women responded to things and it's just hearing my my stepfather's perspective so it would like give me both sides so then he would come to me and be like, well, what did you think about this? Or how did you, how did you see it? And it was just that kind of perspective that really like gave me the perspective of like being a dad and like how to really like communicate with my son. Yeah. Oh, guys, I think that's beautiful. So talking about both your biological and both like biological and folks that aren't necessarily related to you. I call them kin folk, um, your kin folk who pour into you. And so I think that what y'all have said really speaks to the importance of having a male role model, um, even if it isn't your biological father. Um, and I really like how you talked about Orlando. You're still learning and growing even now. So not just when you're a child, like when you're a child, having someone to look up to, but having some folks who have been in the places that you may be going or the places that you're trying to go is really important as well. Like we talk about that in the professional sense. Um, mm -hmm. Like, oh, like always have someone that you should, that you're looking up to in the professional sense. So you'll keep growing. So why isn't, why aren't we having the same conversation when it comes to being a good man or being a good woman? Mm -hmm. We need mentors and role models in those spaces as well. Um, good point. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's very good. So you all talked about values, um, learning what it means to be a good man. So I am interested to know what are three things that you hope your son prioritizes um, or three things that you hope they value as they go through life? I guess I so thought about this one. Um, so for me, um, it's my my son to be uh have emotional intelligence. Like I know a lot of times, like cause like I grew up with the like mindset of like you know just throw some dirt on it, you got to figure it out, right? And it's like I want my son to be able to be able to explain like what is going on, like how you feeling, like that. So for me, it's the most intelligence. It's and it's it's also prayer, like. We pray every night, uh, you know, and it, it's something I want him to get accustomed to is having that conversation with Christ. Like, I feel like for, for him, I want that to definitely be something that nowadays it is his foundation. And also to have, have confidence in him, like, because he's growing up in a world where technology and how you look is everything nowadays. So, I like, I want him to understand, like, who he is is not a mistake and, and the way he's created is, is beautifully made and he should never defer. He should never think anything different. All right. All right. Oh, come on now, sir. All right. I'm not going, I'm not going to interject again right now. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I would start with, um, I would want them to know God, like, know the word and like have a habit of going into the word and leaning on God. That's that's one thing I really want them to to have and to grow with. Um, another thing is to be kind to everyone, but especially to women and black women. I think that's that's super important to me. If I don't if I don't do nothing else right, I want to do that right. To have that respect for women. Um after that, um, be be generous. Give give your time, give your money, just give uh, at at any point. Whether it's you know the poor or someone in help, you see them on the side of the road. Just just be that good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I think for me, um, 
uh, these guys are all over it. Um, I would I would say prioritize uh, God, Jesus as as number one. Uh, want you to be saved uh, first of all, and, and have a relationship, not just uh, go through the motions of church, but have a relationship with with the Lord. Um, so that uh, when I know that you have a relationship, then I know you're gonna you're gonna have a, a ear for God and and be able to to listen for God um, in, in different situations. So if I can get you if I can get you there, and then uh, and the other thing is I, I want you to um, be a good person and all, but I want you to prioritize your your family. Say for instance, I want you to have your family above. Uh, uh, different, you know, different things and different uh, material things. And, you know, even in our work, we want that work to be um, with a purpose to take care of my family, to make sure that they're provided for, not just to work, to be work and accumulate, but make sure the family is, you know, uh, not that we have to have a lot, but we just have, you know, we just want to make sure that we're provided for, but, but, uh, also be generous to give to others that we don't just, you know, do it and hoard all that, all things, but we want to make sure that we, 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 um, we keep things in perspective. Um, another thing I want, you know, I think probably, you know, number three would be, uh, you got to love yourself too. You know what I mean? You got to, um, you don't love yourself among, above others. I think you should be, uh, esteem others higher than yourself. But I think you're going to have, have a certain level of confidence um, to be able to go through this life. And, and you know, as a uh, black man, um, you, you're going to be beat down on some things or you're going to be told you can't do on, on some things. But I want you to make sure that you, you kind of have some confidence in yourself, some, some love for yourself to know that no matter what they tell you, and I think you'll get that with the relationship with, with the Lord, no matter what they tell you, you are, you are somebody in that you can, and, and, and there's, uh, there's nothing that, that you can't do. I used to tell Nick coming, coming up, my job was to make sure that he didn't close any doors uh, before he was old enough to realize what the do doors were and, uh, and, and make mistakes that could, could hinder him the rest of his life. And, and one thing, you know, for that, he loved football. And, and, you know, he, he loved playing football and, and different things, but he didn't realize early that your grades are going to determine whether you're going to go on, even if I don't care how good you are, uh, would, would determine how you, so I, I always tell him, you got to make sure that you're taking care of that, uh, making sure that you don't close doors before you realize that those doors are important. So that's kind of how I, I would, I would about, you know, prioritize the, the, the three to make sure that, you know, my job was to keep you where you don't have anything trailing you that you can do whatever you want to do mm -hmm. uh, in this world. Mm -hmm. I was going to say I didn't have nothing to add or take away to what y'all said. We could do a mic drop on it. But mm -hmm. I just want to say, like, just like hearing y'all talk, um, especially about like the confidence piece um, and just like speaking to your sons about like who they should be just made me think about how important a father's role is in helping their children like shape their identity. And like, really that is what our father God does for us. Yeah. Also, Absolutely. like we find our identity in God. That'll preach, but we ain't gonna preach it right now. <laughs> I just wanted to highlight it. I just, I mean, everything that y'all said was so good. Um, yeah, so emotional intelligence confidence, God, prayer, um, kindness, being generous, having your family and providing for them. I just think those are some very excellent things that we hope that our children will prioritize, especially our sons. Um, I think that's good. We're going to shift a little bit to talk about relationships, et cetera, et cetera. So the first question is, what do you want your son to know about relationships? And this could be romantic relationships. It could be friendships, whatever type of relationships y'all would like to focus on for the time being. What would you like your son to know about relationships? 
uh, I guess it's back on my end here. <laughs> I think uh, relationships, uh, just to let, let them know, any relationship is going to require some work. Um, you're going to have to put in uh, everything with any relationship is not going to be uh, uh, always up or everything is always always hunky dory i would say that's an old term in my <laughs> generation but everything is not always great so that you know whether it's going to be in your marriage or whether it's going to be with a friend that you um uh one of your best friends is that you're going to have to to work at that and i think um i think that's going to be uh it's not to not to put an undue or unrealistic uh things on your friends or your spouse or whatever that, that can't be achieved. I think that, you know, um, we have to make sure that we, we're realistic and we actually have to make sure that we are being fair, you know, being fair to what we expect. And um, yeah, so yeah, I think that's, I'll stop there, I think. Uh, I think I want, I want my boys to be better communicators, whether it's like uh, romantically or, you know, platonic relationships. Um, yeah, that's that's an area where I have to do a lot of work in and I don't want them to start at the lower level that I did. I want them to be good or great going into relationships, you know, let your, your partner or your friends know how you feeling, like how are they treating you? Um, what you want in the relationship and uh, where you want it to go. So, yeah, I definitely want better for them uh, in that sense. Yeah. Did you grow up in the throw some dirt on it generation? Like, like back then? <laughs> <laughs> um, dirt on it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think, yeah, my parents, my parents are old school. So, yeah, you can say so I, I would say definitely that there is a balance to whether it's a relate to whether it's a friendship or it's, it's more than that. Like there, there's definitely a balance to the relationship. And it's definitely like, for me, I would say definitely communication. is that big thing. Like never, never get tired of communicating. Like, even if it's uncomfortable, like still communicate it. Even if you may have to like say it a different way, cause they didn't hear it the way you meant it the first time. Like make sure that you're always at a place to like, communication is the foundation for whether it's a friendship or for something more like you have to understand like it's not always going to be your way mm -hmm. but i want you to know like you can't communicate and even in your differences y'all can still communicate to find a balance for how y'all want to move forward in any type of situation over communicate yeah that's what a lot of people say yeah <laughs> if you need to over communicate look, let's get to it yeah. <laughs> hey, I, one thing that one thing that I see already, these young guys got got a lesson that I needed years ago. <laughs> Just <laughs> <the> part. Okay. <laughs> so people who watch this, that that might be the key for for this whole entire video: communicate, 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 yes. over communicate. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah, which I think has been a bit of a theme. Uh more more so in the like the uh, mother, son, and now the father, son videos is just talking about mm -hmm. communication and the emotional intelligence piece. So I think it's interesting mm -hmm. that y'all are, that y'all are bringing, bringing that up. Okay. When it comes to romantic relationships in particular, and I know Matt and Orlando, y'all got a little ways to go before, before this will happen, but what type of woman, we can make this more general. We'll just make it more general. We'll make it real general. And don't get don't get yourself in trouble, Mr. Vernon, since I know Nick is already <laughs> married. <laughs> what type of woman should or do you hope your son will be looking for? We're gonna make it real general. I would I would hope they they look for a woman that resembles their mother, a God feeling, a God fearing woman, someone who works hard, who loves everyone, and doesn't and, and cares about everyone, who would give you know their last to you. So I, I would hope they would look for traits that resemble uh, their mother for sure. Orlando well, tried to get some brownie points in this video. <laughs> you ain't slick. <laughs> no, that's the truth. That's the truth. If I get brownie <laughs> points, that's just that's just added bonus. <laughs> I see what's going on here. 
okay, I guess I I would say someone who definitely motivates them or or in maybe challenge is a good word, but someone who definitely pushes them to like better themselves. Like you have someone who is someone that you like want to grow and develop in life with someone who wants, who, who you want to become better because you're around them, whether it's like spiritually, like they're deep in their face. So you want to get stronger or if it's just somebody like you really find a way to where y'all connect at, at a spiritual level to where it develops you into a better man. Mm, that's good. Yeah, um, Erica's going to accuse me of trying to get brownie points here, but <laughs> I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, Orlando said a lot, um, you know, um, you got to have that caring, that that person that, that's a caring, uh, um, caring woman, a hardworking woman, a, a person that really is going to kind of be there with you um, through thick and thin. Um, because everything is not always going to be great. Uh, and, you know, everything is not always going to go what we think is our way, but you got to have that, that, uh, person that's going to, going to stay with you that you're, you're kind of ride or die kind of deal. I think that's a young folk term, right? <laughs> but you, <laughs> you're going to have that person. No <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have that person that, um, that really is, is, uh, uh, that God fearing person, the God fearing uh, person, first of all, and then that person that's that's a giving person, that's a um, that gives that gives no matter, uh, and they would be the last to uh, go buy for themselves, but they're really they're lo looking to give to somebody else and have that kind of kind of attitude, that spirit. And I feel like I feel like that's the person that that I got. Uh, so that's kind of how I. You know, have my kids say, "Well, look at you. You know, have Nate look look at a woman like your mother, not your mother, but a woman like your mother." But you know, it's got to be that giving person, that that God fearing person, and and that person that's still going to be there through thick and thin. You slid, you slid that in there to get these brownie points. It's so, it's okay. I ain't mad at, I ain't mad at y'all at all. Um, so on the inverse of that. And y'all have talked about some things like being a good communicator, um, being God, having God at the center and things like that. But what type of man should your son be if he wants to attract this woman that y'all have described? Um, yes, I think it's back on me. I'll, I'll start here. Um, you got to have that uh, something. You, you got to have something going for you. Not, not necessarily you don't have to have all the material things of the world, but you got to have that that caring, you know, that caring attitude, that caring spirit that that comes along with it, that, you know, someone see that you can you're not going to go and mess around um, on them. You, you know, you are you are kind of a committed that I guess that's what I'm looking for. The word that a person that seek it, that you're, you'll be committed uh, and, and not really. Um, fly by night, right? You know, like if tough things happen, they're, they're gone. But I want you to be that person that says, look, I'm a loyal person. I'm, I'm a hardworking person. I'm a, a God-fearing person. Um, and God-fearing first for me is, you know, because I think when you when you put God first, then all the other things, you know, will, will kind of fall in place and uh, will, will fall in place. But I, I think that's kind of, uh, and, and, um, you know, you got to have something, you know, look like you're going somewhere, you know, um, you may not be there yet. You may not have anything, but if someone sees the potential in you and they see that by the way you carry yourself, the way that you, you know, you go about things and, and that's kind of, you want to be able to attract somebody by, by that, because a lot of times when you're younger, you don't, you don't have anything other than what your parents have. So, <laughs> so you want to, yeah. But I guess that uh, that I'm um, I'm done with it. I'm sorry, I didn't. I'll pass it off there, Olinda. Yeah, um, yeah. You you had great points there. Um, yeah, you you definitely have to have to be goal oriented. I think I think women look for 
like what are you pouring your time into like is it something positive or you know is it something you're just screwing around with so you, you definitely have to be goal-oriented and um just self I think self-confidence is key too. just believing in yourself believing in your abilities to achieve those goals and I think I think you can't go wrong with that Absolutely. So I will say, definitely uh, have compassion. Like life happens to everybody. So I want you to be compassionate, just at whatever whatever level of life you are at. Like I need you to have compassion to understand life is different. Um, and another thing I do is something I do with him now. I always tell him like, even though he's five, like when he says something, I would say, okay, now you got to stand on it. Whatever that that may be, I want you to be able to, as a man, I want you to be able to stand on your word. I want if you're looking for this type of woman, she needs to know that you're a man of your word. So if you say you're going to do something or you say you're doing this, I need you to be able to stand on it and go and go do it. Like, it does not matter whether it's easy or whether you may have to do other steps to get to the end result. Like, if you say that, I need you to stand on that and mean what you say. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, we can mic drop on that, too. Well, as, as a woman, <laughs> as a woman. I will say that the things that y'all listed are important to us women. Um, well, at least a certain at least a certain type of woman. The type of woman See, I listen. am. We listen. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's because y'all all the talk all them talked about this communication. So <laughs> <laughs> communication and emotional intelligence. I just wanna, I'm gonna have to put some preacher chords on here for these uh for these uh traits to be going for. Men listen and ladies listen too. Um, yeah, I think that that's, I think that's very good. I mean, y'all have said, y'all have said so much. I really don't want to, I don't want to add too much more to it. Um, so I will just ask y'all, do y'all have any last bits of advice, anything that you wanted to say that you didn't regarding men, what advice you would want to give to your son? Um, it doesn't have to be pertaining to relationships, just anything that you think may have been left off. I'll say, I'll say this. I mean, I, I've accomplished different things in, in my life as far as, uh, you know, going to school, going to college, finishing college and doing different things. But um, my most um, prized or my, my most, uh, I guess, uh, highest priority accomplishments is that, you know, my, my job that I've done with my son and, and my daughters as well, but we're talking sons tonight, um, is that, uh, the person that, that he's turned out to be, um, and I, I look at him and I, and I look at him with, um, with his new baby soul. I look at him and he's, he's doing the things that I did. Um, and I, you know, and I, I think, okay, man, you are, you got a compassion. You you you're looking out for your family. You're doing different things, and I I, I take one. Of, that's that's one of my highest accomplishments as a as a man. Uh, is uh, you know that you know, and I could say the same thing about my daughters as well. And and I'm proud of my whole family. I'm proud of all my kids. But I would say in in, in since all of my kids, I'm so happy with um, how they have uh, turned out, and I just thank the Lord for it. I had my part in it, but I, I really give all the glory and honor back to him because, you know, I'm, you know, I was a, a non-communicating knucklehead, <laughs> and you know, and he allowed he allowed, uh, you know, uh, me to see things from others, and he allowed me to to gravitate and 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 actually to accept him as a at a younger age. Um, uh, and then he allowed me to grow my family up in the Lord. So that's, I'm, I'm just so thankful to the Lord for, for how they've turned out. So, so I would say, um, especially as a, as a father, like your son mimics you a lot. Yeah. And so I would say be deliberate and what he mimics. So for example, for me, it's like, I, I'm always deliberate when I pray that I'm in front of him or when it's time of worship that I'm in front of him. Cause I want him to be able to constantly see that not, not only women can worship and cry and do that, Amen. but men do it as well. 
So it's like I, I'm 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 always deliberate when that happens that he is around so that he can see that. So I would say definitely like even if if you're always doing something good, make sure you're deliberate and showing your son so that he can pick that up. Man. That was good right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I couldn't even lost my train of thought there. Um I think I would I would give like my sons and like other fathers advice that um you don't have, can't be a perfect dad. You're gonna make mistakes. So I think realizing that in the beginning or wherever wherever you are trying to repair your relationship or wherever you are in life, you're not gonna be perfect. Um and it's okay to tell them that you make mistakes. You know, a lot of times. Uh, I might be upset with, you know, work or whatever's going on. And sometimes I'll take it. Well, not not take it out on my kids, but just um, like I overcorrect sometimes. And, I'll you know, I'll tell them they're five and three. You know what? Daddy made a mistake. I shouldn't have did this. So uh, admitting your mistakes and showing your vulnerability is 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 great teaching. And it will it will do a lot in the long run. And yeah, don't be af- don't be afraid to be vulnerable in front of your kids. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yep. Good. Oh, guys, I just want to cry. Um, <laughs> yeah, this has been so good. Yeah, it's just been good, and I I honor each of you for the great job that you are doing as fathers and as men. Because I wouldn't ask you to be on this panel if I didn't think that you had some good stuff to say. <laughs> um, and if I didn't like see Thank the you. fruit of what you all are saying. So I really do honor you all and think that you're just, just doing a great job. And I pray that those who watch this video will take a lot out of it. Um, if you don't have a male role model in your life, then I pray that you can take some of this advice and apply it to your life. And I do pray that you are connected to good men who can pour into you like this all all of the time because I think it's necessary um yeah I think that y'all have said y'all's last bits and pieces yeah we'll do a quick scan around the virtual room yeah so I mean again thank y'all so much for being on this panel this was amazing I've taken so much out of it and I know that my viewers will as well so y'all make sure you watch this watch it as many times as you need to go back and look at the other videos to see what things may have been consistent across them and please apply it to your life Um, I think that next week we're going to jump back into being more consistent with our new year resolutions but who knows I don't know where God is going to take us. Either way, I look forward to seeing you next time for a little TLC. Bye-bye.